saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, isn't that good? I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Here we go. This is my testimony from death to life, because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. for your testimony. Amen. Let's go. Praise be with that 
Joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. I'll count the joy come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. Amen. Think about those lyrics for the sec for a second here. I'll count the joy come every battle. Yay, we have a battle to face, right? I have a confession to make real quick. I'm not at a Catholic church. This is different. This is just sharing my, my, my weakness and his strength. Amen? Yesterday, I had the blessing of cleaning out my garage. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. So in my diligence, I said, you know what? I'm going to pull my truck out of the garage to make more room to do this work. I'm pulling out of the garage, and the, the lift on my camper pops up and catches one of the bicycles hanging from the ceiling in the garage and ripped off the whole back door of my truck. Hallelujah. Can anybody say amen? Count the joy come every battle. And I got not full of faith. I got full of anger at that moment. Who can relate to that? And I spent about two hours being frustrated and angry and getting mad because the door is laying on the ground in my garage. But... Our doubts need to become a doubt. And our belief needs to become a belief. And I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength to overcome this trial. So the time I spent complaining was longer than the prayer I prayed. The prayer I played, prayed was, help God. And I kid you not, you could ask my wife after service, the solution popped up. And we, we fixed it through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in my knucklehead brain. Amen? Start doubting your doubts and believing your beliefs. I believe he can do all things by giving me the strength to conquer that problem. Thank God for that. But right now we have a prayer request. This is to build up to this. How many of you want to doubt your doubts with me? And believe our beliefs. We believe he answers our prayers. Raise your hand if he's answered a prayer to you for you today. Amen. Right there. Look around. That's faith in work. But right now we want to play, pray for Jose Enrique, who had a stroke yesterday, and he's in ICU, and our God can heal him. Amen? Raise your hand if you believe it. We believe it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Jose to you. Father, right now, we ask first and foremost that you comfort him, that there be no fear, no doubt, no worry, no anxiety, that, Lord, you would regulate what has gone wrong in his body. Lord, that you would begin to soothe his heart remove anxiety fear and doubt and in its place faith grow up lord that you would comfort his family lord that they would be a comfort to him as well and father we're praying in faith believing you for a miracle in the name of our savior jesus christ and all who believe says amen amen pastor richard amen amen all right church family go ahead and turn to somebody next you take about 15 seconds and say hello to somebody, tell them they look good, tell them you're happy to see them, meet a new friend, share a name. If you're checking us out online, hey, we want to thank you so much for being a part of our C3 online experience. Be sure to drop a, drop a little word in the chat, tell us where you're from, tell us hello, like, add, subscribe, you'll be good to go. Hey, go ahead and grab a seat, church family. 
once you're finished meeting the folks around you. Hey, happy Sunday. And not just any Sunday, happy Palm Sunday to everybody. Yeah, this is the beginning of Holy Week. You know, we are seven days away from Resurrection Sunday, from Easter. And this begins, this, this begins what we call the Passion Week, where, you know, each day something happens in the Gospels leading up to the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Very exciting, very exciting times, especially for those of us that believe, man. It is just a powerful, powerful week to get in that attitude, that moment of uh, focusing on our Savior today. Uh, so I'm so grateful and happy that you guys would be here this Sunday morning with us. And as a matter of fact, speaking of excitement, I want to go ahead and welcome all of our guests in the house. Let's give a big round of applause. If this is your first time, if you're one of our guests here today, go ahead and raise your hand so we can properly welcome you guys. Hey, look at that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey. Well, if you are, if you raise your hand or uh, are one of our guests, we want you guys to know that you got a little card you got. It's a little way that we can pray for you this week. And then if you turn it into our uh, info hub on the way out, we'd love to give you a gift. Our little way of saying thank you for spending this Sunday morning with us. Uh, don't worry. You know, don't worry about uh, We won't bug you. won't bother you or anything like that. Um, and even if you're like, well, I want to fill it up. Well, go be sure. Be sure if this is your first time, if you're one of our guests, be sure to go to the Info Hub and say hello to myself, Pastor Mike, one of the team there. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, just hear your story and uh, be there just to, just to welcome you guys properly. So we're real excited that you would choose today to uh, be able to spend with us here on the Sunday, Palm Sunday at C3. One more time, let's give a big round of applause for our guests. Thanks for choosing this Sunday with us. Man, hey, so speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, celebration today, we're going to prepare ourselves to receive tithes and offerings. Yeah! An extension of our worship because it's not just the song, it's the way we live our life. It's how we choose to trust God. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this confession of faith uh, that we're believing, to, we're believing to pay attention to the miracles that God's doing in our lives in this area, uh, whether it's finance, substance, work, all that good stuff. And, you know, uh, Miss Linda just, she came and gave me a testimony. She said, Pastor Richard, you got to share this. Uh, she, had, she had a settlement um, recently that was above and beyond. You know, she's been going. She's been going through this stuff over the past six years, and it turns out that what she was offered at the very beginning is not what she got at the end. Almost double, double what the first the first number was. And just talking with lawyers and all that kind of stuff. At the very end of it, after she was sharing her thoughts, her faith, the, the lawyer ended up he got out a pen, and you know, it could, be a, it could be a good thing or a bad thing sometimes. Lawyer gets out a pen. And he ends up crossing out a number, and she ends up getting $2,000 more at that final moment of what was, what was offered to her. And she just wants to praise God. And I believe that, you know, God does not forsake those who trust him, right? Especially when it comes to these matters, because these are the things that determine how we live our life, our anxiety levels. You know, God wants us to be at peace. So today, I just want to let you know that, you know, as, as we are generous to be obedient and give, we know that our God says uh, he will pour out in greater measure back towards us. Hey, today, if you're giving in tithes and offerings today, uh, go ahead and get your hand up if you need an envelope, giving by cash or check. If you're giving digitally, we have a bunch of different ways to give up on the, on, on the screen. Venmo if you don't want to make another account. Or you could use our uh, church center app, all that kind of stuff right then and there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's one way to do it. Tax deductible receipt at the end of the year. That way you guys can get taken care of. Make sure you get your deductions, all that good stuff. Well, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to go ahead and lead us through this confession of faith, right? You know, and th this is one of those things. And I think this is what it is, especially for me. And what happens is when we make this confession of faith, it makes me aware of the good things that God's always been doing in my life, right? It kind of helps me focus when I find that when I find that extra money, when I get that envelope, when I when when I see the check that comes in the mail, I'm recognizing. Wait a minute, this is God responding to my faithfulness. This is God showing Himself good, right? Because so many times we can live life and we can receive blessings without giving honor back to God. And this is one thing I love about it. It keeps my heart, my radar on check to say, wait, this is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is God's good hand in my life. So if you will, on three, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and say this confession of faith together. Ready? One, two, three. As we give today, we are believing for health and healing, 
multiple streams of income, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, favorable settlements, sales and commissions, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off. You have blessed me to be a blessing, and I have more than enough to give so that your vision and purpose for this house may be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey. Well, ushers, whenever you're ready, you guys are welcome to pass out the buckets if you haven't already. All right, all right. And as the buckets are going by, just one quick announcement. Then we'll get, we have some video announcements I'd like to show you guys. But really, the big announcement is, look around. We are getting ready for Easter weekend. Hey! And if you don't know, man, Easter is not just some holiday about a bunny. It is a week packed with the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? And that's why we have extra seats in the back. That's why we see this backdrop here. That's why we got worship set up a little bit differently. And hey, each and every one of those seats, I believe, will hold a soul in need of salvation. Now the question is, they're not just going to show up because we have empty seats. They're going to show up because you bring them. Right? I mean, look, Jesus was a recruiter. He said, I need some disciples. He went out and found them. Right? The, the tomb was empty. And Jesus and the angel, they saw, the, they, they saw the, the, the women and said, hey, go tell somebody. So right there, each and every one of those seats is a go tell somebody seat. It's a go tell somebody seat. And the only way it's getting filled up is if you go tell somebody. So out there, we have a few of these left out. We have these uh, Easter invite packets left. We probably got a couple dozen left out there in the back. Please, hey. We got, the, we got these invites, we got these cards, we got these packets. Let's do, do us a favor by leaving that, that uh, table empty. On the way out, grab one, pass one out. If you got to do some Holy Ghost littering in the right places, do it. Leave it on somebody's desk in their cubicle at a, at a, at a coffee shop. If you need to, you don't got to be weird. Just saying, hey, if you got nothing going on next Sunday, I want to invite you out to this. You know, if you have a friend, tell them you'll bring them. You know, get them a bagel, do whatever you got to do, and bring them out Friday night for, uh, for our Good Friday. We got Sunday, Saturday, all that kind of stuff. All the times are up there on the screen. You'll see it on the video. And uh, be sure to grab one of these on the way out so you can get somebody to hear the gospel. It's going to be a phenomenal live presentation. And uh, really, that's kind of what's going on. So uh, I can't wait. Hey, can't wait to see that this room is a normal setup for our Sunday mornings, right? But it's all going to begin somewhere. So let's go ahead and roll those video announcements, and we'll get on with worship. There's a trailer there. However, we're going to go into worship. Would you stand with us?
if I stumble, you'll be right there. You're in every step I take. When the rain fell, when the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay. It's uh, it's real when fear comes upon you. Whether it's because of your finances, because you got a bad report from the doctor, worried about the future. that this year we wanted to do a production. It's not the Last Supper, the famous painting that Leonardo da Vinci did. And obviously they, didn't, they weren't in the upper room on one side of the table. But he was commissioned to do this mural in the convent of Santa Maria, 1494. And it's still there today. Deteriorating, and but he thought, what if I did such a thing that would be appropriate for this mural? Out of all the Bible, what am I going to do in this dining room? And he thought that the most appropriate thing to do was to paint the last supper. That every time the the nuns would be in there fathers would be eating, they would be looking up at this picture. And each 
of the disciples are depicted in a specific way of how he interpreted through the scripture of what they might have thought. And we've been rehearsing, we've been getting ready, we're believing God was able to just believing for people to come in the room that maybe don't know about God and don't know about his love and about his forgiveness. And so side hustle of Ubering just to, just to make some money for this documentary I'm producing but I have these little cards and as soon as there's a window open I ask a lot of people are just visiting the valley but you know what if they're here I get ready to be here on Easter and Easter Sunday and boom here's a card I want to invite you you may have seen the billboard but, but we want to set the stage you know this is Everybody that was there would one week later be shouting, crucify him. How fickle can we be in our relationship with God? How fickle can we be in one moment we were loving Jesus and the next minute we're saying crucify him. Same people. But Jesus comes into Jerusalem and he comes in 
to show this trailer to give you a little glimpse of what we're talking about, then we're going to get into the message. going to be powerful. I want you to come. If You know what? If you can get that, go to our Facebook, go to Instagram, share it, uh, send it to someone, um, and let's believe that this place is going to reach out. Like I said, we're going to get into uh, the disciples of, of Judas and then Jesus at, who was at the dinner, because this is this whole series that we started is the, the guest list, who's coming to dinner, and, and, re and, and revealing the, the guest list of Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. And we can put the, the picture up of the famous Leonardo da Vinci picture. And, and uh, with, with all the disciples, there are specific disciples that if you look at from left to right, we see Nathaniel's at the, at the end of the table. We talked about him a little bit. Um, Philip, he, he heard from his friend Philip, said, hey, we found the Messiah who Moses and the law talked about. And Jesus comes and says, I knew you. You were under the fig tree. I knew you from the day that you were born. And, and he, was at, he was there at the place where he's, uh, Jesus calls him. You know what? Here's a man who, whom there's no guile. This, this, here's a man of integrity. And he's like, how do you mean guile? How do you know? Because you know what? Integrity is oftentimes not seen. And Jesus saw. And he's like, you saw when I did that? Nobody else knew, but I still did it. I still was integrous. I still walked with integrity. That was Nathaniel. He's probably leaning forward just saying, how could this happen? Jesus knows all. He probably thinks Jesus saw me before I was born, so Jesus knows what's going to take place. Then we have James the Less. James is the, the, the brother of Peter, which is he was the first to come to the Lord, and then he brought Peter and he wasn't in the inner circle like his brother, but you would have thought, man, I'm the, I was the first disciple. I should be, I should be in the inner circle. I should be there. But he was, he was just saying, you know what? I, I'm okay with my position. I'm okay with where I'm at. Then there was uh, Andrew is right next to him. Andrew uh, is, is the bro brother of uh, Andrew and Peter. Is that right? Are we right? Brother Simon Peter. And he was he's there and he's uh, he's there just checking things out. Then we see in the back is Peter. Peter is the one that's the hot headed. He has his knife, always has the dagger, cuts the ear off of the Roman soldier. Jesus puts it back and you know, he's bold. We saw last week. You know what? Peter's the kind of guy he's just like you know what, I'm willing to take a risk, and if I fail, okay. He said, Jesus, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, and then when Jesus says, you know what, I'm going to go to the cross, he says, no, you're not, and then he's called Satan by Jesus, and it's like, oh, God. Jesus says, come walk on the boat. He uh, comes out of the boat. He starts walking the water, takes his eyes off. He fall, fails. But Peter's like, he doesn't care. He's just going to go for it. Then there's Judas Iscariot, which we're going to be talking about. There he is. He has the bag of money in his hand. If you notice, it's right behind him with Peter with his dagger behind him. And there's John the Beloved. He's the one in the scriptures that talks about him being on the breast of Jesus. But then when Jesus says that, the scripture says that he's like leans over and he's, he's kind of talking to Peter like, what's happening? But then he goes back to the, you know, comforted by Jesus. But it's like, what's going on here? 
Thomas, we know him as a doubter. He's one of those guys that, that even though he doubted, he still had faith. And people just always looked at his doubt instead of his faith. And then we see James the elder, James and John. They were called the sons of thunder. They were part of the inner circle with Peter. We saw that last week, Peter, James, and John. And we see Philip. We see Philip. This the, he's there. He's the one that brought Jesus the, the loaves and the fishes. We see Matthew. He's the tax collector. He's the, the one sinner of sinners out of that group. Thaddeus. We see Thaddeus. And there wasn't really a whole lot about Thaddeus, but he's a, a, a committed follower of Jesus Christ. And, you know, he just followed Jesus. And there's Simon the Zealot. He was a a part of a revolutionary group. Um, they were called the Zealots, and they wanted to over, overthrow uh, Rome because of what was taking place. And he, he's this ragtag group of people. But today we're going to take a look at Judas. Judas was from Judea. And all the other disciples were from, from Galilee. Many of them were from Galilee, but he's kind of like the outsider. He wasn't from the region. He wasn't from the area. So he's probably coming in into, in, into the, the group of like, oh, these guys probably think of me as an outsider. He's one of the 12 disciples, one of the 12 apostles. But as we kind of see in Scripture, he probably never really believed in, in Jesus Christ. There were some that did not believe. The Bible says in John 6, 64, it says, but there were some who, who do not believe. Now, Jesus is saying there's some, who, some, not just one, but there's some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. So he says there's some that do not believe. They're a follower of Jesus Christ. And Judas might have been one of those guys that was a follower of Jesus Christ, but he did not really believe. There's people in the church that, that go to church, but that many of them, in all reality, they just don't really believe. They don't have that faith. He may not have been convinced that Jesus was the Christ, that was the Messiah. We see all the other disciples in the, in the reading. We're going to go to Matthew 26, chapter. If we can go to Matthew 26, chapter, verse 20. And it says, when evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now, they were eating, and he says, Surely I say to you that one of you will betray me. And this is the, the act of where the disciples come. Next, they were exceedingly sorrowful, and each one of them began to say to himself, Lord, is it I? When you say that, you're saying, Lord, because you believe in God. You believe that Jesus is the Lord. You believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Lord, it is I. And then he answers as that he who dips his hand in the dish will, be, will betray me. And the Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written, but woe to him, to the man whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better, it would have been good for that man if he had not been born. But let's move on. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, he didn't say, Lord, is it I? Lord, is it I? He says, Rabbi, teacher. If you would have been a disciple of Jesus Christ, if you would have believed in Jesus wholeheartedly, you wouldn't have said, Rabbi, you would have said, Master, Lord, Lord is it I. So that's kind of like a kind of, you see the thing with, with Judas, is maybe he wasn't really a follower in terms of believe in Jesus that he was the Messiah. And then he says, and then he comes and, and Judas was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? And he says, you have said it. And so it's funny as we see in evening and come, they sat down with the 12. So we see that maybe Judas wasn't really, didn't really believe as he was following Jesus. While the other disciples made the profession of faith and their loyalty, Jesus, Judas never did that. He kind of remained silent. Another thing about Judas, Judas not only lacked the faith in Christ, but he also had which we don't really know if he really had that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, all this we read in the Bible, and we need to take, and we need to interpret, we need to have the Holy Spirit. And we see in the, in, in the gospel the list of the 12. 
Usually they were all generally in the same order, whether it's in Matthew, whether it's Mark, whether it's Luke. We see that in the list of disciples, the general order is to believe that kind of the relative closeness that Jesus had to his disciples. He always said the first ones, Peter, James, and John, we know that they were a part of the inner circle. So when it's said in the Bible, when it talks about the list of the disciples in those different gospels, it starts off with, with, with Peter, James, and John in terms of kind of that he, they were the inner circle. So he's talking to say, these are the ones that I have relationship with. These, you know, my friends, these, these are my close friends. These are the ones that I have close relationship. And if you look in the Bible, it's always seen that jo Judas was the last one on the list. So it's kind of like, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. Judas, here he was. He's a, he was the last one on the list. And really, the only documented dialogue that Jesus has with Judas is when Judas is talking to him about wasting that perfume and ointment and then Jesus basically rebukes him so there wasn't it wasn't one of those those types of relationship that maybe maybe he didn't wasn't even that close to to Jesus a another thing it, Judas we know that he was the uh, the treasurer he's the one that took care of the money from for Jesus's ministry he's the one that probably paid all the bills and did the account you would have thought it would have been Matthew the tax collector because he was good at that he was good at stealing people and taking penny pension, whatever, to all that money. But, but it was Judas that was put in that position because he was consumed that we see that with greed. And Judas may have desired to follow Jesus because he thought, you know what? He has lots of followers. He's going to make lots of money. This is going to be profitable for me. And you know what? Maybe that's the reason that he says, I'm going to start following Jesus. I'm going to start following Jesus for this reason and for this purpose. And, and, and I'm going to be the one who's taking the collections. And, and I'm going to be the one that we're going to be profiting. And I may put some money to the side. And you know what? This is going to be great for me. His motives were probably money-driven. Money-driven. That's probably what he was going. But then also Judas, like most people believe just like Simon the Zealot, he believed that Jesus, when he was talking about overthrowing Rome and talking about love, that he was in power, that he was the Messiah, that he was going to be the king, when he heard about all these things, maybe his hopes and desires was to benefit from his association with Jesus. In terms of politically, wow, if I'm one of the disciples, if Jesus overthrows Rome and he becomes in power, that means I'm going to have power and I'm going to have this prestige. I'm going to have this, 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 this the acknowledgement of, wow, I'm going to do something special here. I'm going to be one of the right guys. I'm going to be right there in terms of having power over Rome. But then when he realized he comes to that place, he was assuming that and realizing that it wasn't going to happen. And since Jesus did not overthrow Rome, that he wasn't the Messiah that he was expecting, he's probably like, oh, psh, forget this guy. I'm going to betray him. I mean, this guy is like, I followed him for all of the wrong reasons. I'm just going to share a couple things because as we look at Judas's life and then as we look at Jesus's life, we... we we teach about Jesus every Sunday. It's all about the gospel. It's all about Jesus. His, his, it's about him coming down and him loving us and him uh, dying on the cross for us. But there's just kind of some characteristics that we see between Judas and Jesus. And maybe some of these characteristics, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a guy. He's not even saved, not even a believer. He was asking me all kinds of questions. I was telling him about the production. I was telling him about that. And I read him the script of, of Judas. And he says, wow, that's kind of crazy. And, and he goes, I wonder if, has there anybody named their kid Judas? But shockingly, I heard recently that they were saying that, like, out of all the babies that were born in, I forgot what year it was, there was eight people, eight boys that were named Judas. I'm thinking, man, that was that would be a tough one to be. <laughs> man, you're just man. I'm seriously. What would you? Uh, hi, what's your name? I'm Judas. Oh, I mean, it's like, hey, let's do business together. What's your name? Uh, no, nah, I decided I don't want to do business with you. I mean, it was just. 
it's just kind of one of those things. Not that it, you can't be a good person, but it's just like, come on, people. Anyway, so so just kind of just different, just different, um, just different characteristics between Judas and Jesus. Uh, what we see about Jesus is is that he was loyal. He was loyal to his mission. He's loyal to his followers. He's loyal to God. I mean, this is, that's his loyalty that we see in what everything that Jesus did was loyalty. And then we look at Judas. Judas was not loyal at all. Wherever he could probably get an opportunity to not be loyal, that was probably him. And then he took the opportunity to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Loyalty is a big thing. We need to check ourselves. I'm not saying any of you are Judas. Don't get don't get bad with me here. But I'm, I am saying, let's look at some of these characteristics and say, are we not really operating in those characteristics? Are, are we loyal to Jesus Christ? Are we loyal to, to follow him? Or at the moment's notice, we're willing to turn our back on God, which is sad because you and I, we've seen it. We may have been there at one time as well, where we've turned our back on God, but loyalty is so valuable. We see that Jesus, his compassion, he had compassion he had empathy towards other people. Well, Judas was, you know what, it was all about him. What, what can I get out of this situation? How am I going to advance my publicity? How am I going to advance myself? And, and you know what's sad? Over the years, there's, there's been some people that, that have been loyal but, and compassionate, but there's also that have empathy towards others. But Judas didn't have that. He wasn't compassionate. He didn't have that compassion. He was, he, he was all about himself. What can I get out of it? And when I burn this bridge, I'm going to go somewhere else, and I'm going to build a relationship, and then I'm going to burn that bridge. You know, I, I, over the years, there's somebody that, that's kind of been loyal and, and kind of in that way that I'm kind of going back to that loyalty part, that, um, that somebody that has let – me, let me put it this way. As I was a world champion skateboarder, or two time, there was a lot of people that wanted stuff from me. They wanted to be in my inner circle, and when they got what they got, they just left because then they were going to somewhere else to leech off someone else to see what they could get. And you know what? They advanced in different areas. But there was one person that was always loyal. As a little kid, he says, he said that when I was a little kid, I looked up to Eddie Elgara because, man, he was the best. And I wanted, you know, I, I, I wanted to be like him. I wanted to learn his tricks because he had all the best tricks. And for years, 45 years later, he still continues to say that. Tony Hawk, he's loyal. He, he, he just, he he's never reverts to, like, um, trying to make up his own stories, but he's always that way. There's another skater that when, we, when he was a little kid, we took him around. Um, he was 16 years old. We celebrated his 16th birthday. We were on the road going to a camp. He was one of our, he, he was such a great skateboarder. He was one of, uh, just with us um, and teaching the kids how to skate. All of us, he went on. He just superstarred him in street skating. His name is Eric Costin. He has a shoe with Nike and just uh, owns the barracks. And it's a place in, 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 uh, L.A., where a lot of famous skateboarders go, but in his induction to the uh, Skateboard Hall of Fame, he, he was just, he's a simple kid, but he, like, didn't know what to say, wasn't expecting it, I mean, he knew he was going to be, but he didn't have a speech or anything like a lot of people do, but, but he got up there and just looked around, he said, hey, you know what, Eddie Elgar is here, and he said, you know, and, and it's just, Believe me, this is not to pat myself on the back, but I'm just talking about loyalty. And he says, you know, you know what, Eddie, you know what, he's, I, I'm standing up here because of Eddie. I hadn't seen him in 30 years probably. And he says this, and people like laugh, laugh. He goes, you know what, no, no, no. He was like a dad to me. And so, you know, it really meant a lot. Now... Here I am. I feel that I've been a loyal person, a loyal follower of Jesus Christ, and a loyal spiritual son. 
I've only had one pastor in my life until I came out to plant this church. Last week, I heard that my pastor had passed away. Pastor Richard's pastor, boss, employer, dedicated our sons to the Lord and Years, Pastor Donna's only pastor as well, when she was a teenager. Ten years ago, right? It's only been ten years. But loyalty is, it's a tough thing to get. And you know what? Sometimes loyalty could burn you, just like with Jesus' loyalty, it burned him. But be loyal. Let your yeses be yeses. Be faithful. I'm telling you, he, I believe that he is probably the greatest local church pastor soul winner in the world. And when I say that, I say evangelists come in, they could win souls. And evangelists could come in, they get lots of souls. But I'm talking about a, a, a church pastor on a day-to-day -day basis. He would help no less than a hundred people come to the altar almost every week. People would come for years and years and years, and he would go. And, and, and it's one thing to be an evangelist and do big crusades, but when you're a local church pastor, the legacy that he left behind. Anyway, I don't know. I just wanted to say about the loyalty. His loyalty to, G, to, to souls was beyond his heart bled and his heart yearned just to win souls and so I know that his legacy will continue as he has mentored many people as Pastor Richard myself and many others but he was loyal he was compassionate Jesus was compassionate Judas wasn't Self, selfishness Jesus let us live the selfless life and sacrificed so much. Judas was what? He was all about himself. What can I get? How much money? Oh, 30 pieces of silver? Is that all it's going to take? I, you know what? I, and it's just, it's one of those things. It's just like, how can I advance? How can I go to that next level? What can I do? Talking about integrity, Jesus was one of, of moral integrity and righteousness. But you look at Judas, he, you know what? He lacked. He had no ounce of integrity. He was going to do whatever he did to advance his, his call, to advance his ways. Humility. Wow. How more humble can you be when you have followers following you, they're calling you Lord, they're calling you Master, that would probably give you the biggest ego. I want you to do this. I want you to pick that for me, get that for me. When Jesus comes and they're about to have their, their last meal together, he wanted to show his humility and he says, I will wash your feet. Peter goes, no, you won't, no, you won't. It's like... <laughs> There's Peter again. No, you won't. No, you won't. He goes, no. and then when Jesus explains, you know what, if I don't do this, I'm telling you, you're going to miss out. And then, he, and then he says, oh, wash, dip, wash my hands, wash my hair, dip everything over me. But Jesus, the, think about this. God comes down in a nurse suit, and he's going to wash your feet. Showing the humility. But then Judas was all about pride. I have the money bag. I'm the one Jesus trusts. I'm this and I'm that. He's just so prideful about him, about himself, and I, 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 that he had no humility at all. He's all, what can I get out of this? Faithfulness, Jesus' faithfulness to his teachings, to his relationship with God. Even in the face of adversity, he is faithful. 
But Judas was faithless. He had no faith, had no trust, had no... And then we see the legacy. The legacy that Jesus left today, thousands of years later, we are preaching about Jesus. Left a legacy of faith, hope, love, eternal life, heaven. That's the, the legacy Jesus left. And we continue on. We get to continue and leave a legacy for our kids. For those that come after us. For those that will be from generation to generation. Judas left a legacy but when we talked about him, somebody naming their kid Judas, and the, you, you know what his legacy is. His legacy is like evil and wicked, and he's probably one of the most uh, hated and wicked person, people in the Bible. There's lots of, there's lots of wits, wicked kings, but he was the one that betrayed the Savior that took him now to lead us to Easter, lead us to the resurrection. So next week, I hope all of you could come. I hope you're not leaving town. If you are leaving town, you could watch the stream. If, but it's not going to be as impactful as being in this house and seeing these disciples. They've, they've been practicing. They've been rehearsing. They've been sacrificing time. Um, we're getting things ready. This is going to go back. We're going to have the table. They're going to keep coming in. We have some video. We have some stuff talking about Leonardo da Vinci, about, about his, uh, uh, his thoughts of painting the painting and, and what it represents and just all kinds of stuff. We have a poem. Yvonne uh, wrote us a poem. She came. We said, uh, Yvonne, could you write us a poem talking about what is about to take place? You're going to hear that. And it's, it's just going to be a powerful depiction of what happened on that night. I want to encourage you. Get the QR code. If those of you who don't know what DM means, it means direct message. Pa Pastor Michelle, she's so modern and stuff. She goes, just DM someone. People are thinking, what is DM? Or the playbill. Somebody said, what's the playbill? It's when you go to, to New York Broadway. It's, it's, it's So just to let you know, if you don't know anything, any of those any of those wordings, ask us. I probably don't know, but Pastor Donna will, Pastor Richard will. But anyway, it's, it's, it's going to be great. Um, it's going to be a great time. Now that we've gone through all the disciples, now that we've gone and talked about Jesus and Judas and James and John and Peter and uh, Simon the Zealot, James the Less, and, you know, all, Thaddeus, I'm not going to leave him out because poor Thaddeus. A lot of people forget about Thaddeus. Thaddeus, Nathaniel, let's get the guys up there again. Get the guys, let's get the picture of the, all the guys up there. Take a look at them. One of you will betray me. One of you will betray me. Slash Nathaniel, James the Less, Andrew, Judas Iscariot, Peter, John the Beloved, James and Thomas. You know, it's funny that certain people have their, their names, the Doubting Thomas and James the Elder and Philip and Matthew, Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot. Come on out. It's going to be powerful. I'm going to pray over you. I'm, I'm going to, but uh, right now I'm just going to pray over a heart of invite. No fear. One of the things we're afraid of is people will reject us. If they say no, then they say no. But what if they say yes? What if they get saved? What if their life is changed? What if their destiny is altered because you invited them to church? And they may look at these disciples and say, you know, I see a lot of myself in them. You know, some people may look at themselves and see a lot of themselves in Judas. But they don't have to live that way. 
That's the, about, the amazing thing about Jesus Christ, his love and his forgiveness. All are welcome. Some of you may relate to Matthew, the tax collector, stealing and ripping people off in your business and, 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 and doing it and not even caring that people know that that's what you do. Or maybe you're a fisherman. And I love to think about, think about all those disciples. Every single one of them had a life change, a lifestyle change, because they all left what they were doing, whether it's tax collecting, whether it's being fishermen, they left their life and said, I'm following Jesus. For us, Jesus is saying, you need to count the cost. We may not follow him in the way that they did. We may not be in full-time ministry. We may be Uber drivers. We may be realtors. We may be nurses or doctors. We may have our own business. We may be stay-at-home moms, which is a lost art, which is sad because our economy is so bad that many have to have so many jobs just to survive. But in all of that, I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm going to count the cost. I'm going to lay my life down. Not that I do everything perfect. Not that I do everything right. But Lord, I'm going to continue to follow you. When Jesus came to the, the rich young ruler, he said, Jesus, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And he says, well, I would do this, do what the law says. I've done all that since I was young. And Well, then Jesus says, well, then go sell everything and follow me. He's like, God. He counted the cost and said, no, that's too much. I'm not going to follow you. Who knows? He might have been one of the disciples. But he did. But I'm going to pray for uh, the spirit of the invite. The power of the invite. The power of one. What one invite can do. When I was 21 years old, I stopped skateboarding and started drinking and partying and doing drugs and sleeping around. It was just my life was going downhill because I just didn't want that life anymore of skateboarding. But then I got into thinking I was going to find fulfillment in something else. My life started going downhill, and then I ended up working fast food restaurant up at Lake Arrowhead. At my my brother and sister they owned a restaurant there, and I was working there. And this lady came in. And she invited me to accept Jesus Christ into my heart. She was probably in her 60s, and here I was, 21-year-old kid. It's like, I don't want to hear. She, she probably could have said, oh, he probably doesn't want to hear about Jesus. Probably doesn't want to, to go if I invite him to church. He probably doesn't want any. She didn't. She, didn't. she saw a lost soul that on the outside looked like I had it all together, but she saw deep down on the inside, and she says, would you like to invite Jesus into your heart? And that day, my life changed forever. She started coming up and doing Bible studies every Thursday night. I met Pastor Donna through that Bible study, and we got married, and now we have our sons Sons, one son's in the children's, uh, leading the children's ministry. It's our, our youngest son here, and then we have another son up north. They, they love the Lord. But it was that one invite. And I want you to th just think about, maybe this might be the invite. You might not lead them to Jesus. You might not tell them about Jesus. But you might say, here, come to this production and see. Leonardo da Vinci's painting come to life. And it might be that one invitation that somebody's going to give their life to Jesus Christ and the life will be changed and altered forever. Father, I just pray for everyone that's here, Lord. Everyone that's online. Everyone that is going to be going out this week as we're preparing and prepping and getting things ready for next week and for the resurrection. 
Lord, we're believing as a church that we're, we're doing this, that people who come on Easter, that might be the, like the 5,000 that came to Jesus every once in a while when they needed something, and they come on Easter Sunday, Lord, they're going to see the pr presentation of the gospel in a different way, through theater. And Lord, I'm believing that they're just not going to see in like a Netflix show, but Lord, they're going to be compelled to follow you, to follow after you. So Father, I pray right now, Lord, for each person, Lord, as they maybe have social media, they have a card that they can pick up as they leave, that they're going to have the boldness to invite people that they run into. And I pray, Lord, Father, that they would lead, be led by the Spirit of God, that they may see someone and they may not know them at all, but just like May looked into the depths of my heart and saw that I was a lost soul, that they would have that spirit of, of an invite on the inside of them to invite someone. Jesus said to go out and invite all to come to the great banquet. And when the disciples said there's still lots of room, many people didn't want to come. And he says, well, go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come that my house would be filled. Lord, I pray that we would have the, the, the spirit of that invite to compel them to come, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that their life can be changed with that invite. So, Father, I just pray for them right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before we leave, I just want to make sure all of you are right with God. I'm inviting you, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, if you followed him at one time or another, but you never follow through, maybe you know that your relationship with him isn't quite there, and you just need to make a rededication. You just need to say, I need to come back to God. I was, I was invited. I, many of you probably are here in church because of an invite. Somebody invited you at one time or another to go to church, and you went to church, and then you found Jesus Christ. But maybe you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ don't know about the Jesus we were talking about don't know that you don't know anything about him being betrayed by by one of the disciples and that uh, denied by one of his closest followers and we're going to learn all that and see all that but you just say I have to come I have to make that decision and I need to make him maybe you're here and you you don't need to you don't want to call Jesus a rabbi only but you want to make him Lord of your life because there's many people that just say, I, I, I accept Jesus, I like his teachings, but he's not Lord and Savior. He's my Savior, but he's not my Lord. And the Bible says we need to make him Lord and Savior. Lord means I'm following you, whatever you say, God. So if that's you, just at the count of three, just if that's you, you say, I need to get back with God. I've never given my life to Jesus Christ. I want to make this profession of faith. At the count of three, just slip up your hand, and I want to see it go up, and we're going to pray a prayer. One, two, three three if that's you just say god bless you sir right over here anybody else anybody else god bless you, you can put your hand down anybody else anybody else anybody else and say hey, pastor i want to i want to pray that all right you know what i get excited if one person comes hey because the bible says when one person god gets excited over one just as he does thousands Father, I want all of you to repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sin. Come into my life and be Lord and Savior of my life. Today, I'm giving my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, you want to, you want to, uh, uh, do you guys know each other? All right. Well, you can see Carolyn. She's going to give you a free book, some free information, and she'll pray with you. I'm, I'm sure she's already prayed for you many times before. But God bless you. The best is yet to come. I want all of you to stand to your feet. All right. I was trying to get this guy to be one of the disciples, but he didn't want him. And him too, but then you know what? He's too pretty. <laughs> They're a bunch of ragtags. 
Not that you're not pretty, guys. <laughs> huh? What am I saying? That he's big and gnarly and tough. He's like a Peter. I think Peter was probably that way. Anyway, you know, love you guys. I see, see a bunch of familiar faces. Whether you're a guest visiting in the area, um, if you need an Uber driver, uh, my card's in the back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, it's, it's funny. I'd li- you know what? I'd love to meet you. I'm going to be out in the lobby. Just want to let you know, I, I, you know, what you see is what you get. Um, pray for my pastor's family. Because it's, it's a difficult thing. And so pray for us, for our family. Because even though my father is still alive, he's 94. We thought he was going to die many years ago (laughs) and pass, but he's still with us. But he did the best that he could with his life of what he knew. So he wasn't really around a lot. He was an alcoholic during my, when I was being raised in my skateboarding days and things like that. But you know, he got sober and life has changed and had other opportunities to reconcile with family. But the thing is, is uh, my spiritual father, Pastor Jim, really instilled lots of things that my real father did or couldn't or wasn't able to. So, like I said, he's been a part of our family in many seasons of our life. And so just pray for us as we continue that. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for those that are here. I pray that you would bless them this week. Bless them coming, bless them going. Whatever they put their hand to, they will prosper. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that as we leave out this week, we're going to love people to life by an invite. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Bring, bring, bring. church. We'll see you Friday, Saturday, or Sunday.